Welcome to the Creating Wealth and Wellness Podcast. Your hosts, Amanda Kingsley and Tara Masildine, team up to take you on a journey where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel their futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Creating Wealth and Wellness podcast with Amanda Kingsley and Tara Misseldine. Um, so we are so happy to be back. And actually, the topic that we are going to dive into today is something that I feel super passionate about, and that is motivation versus inspiration. And what, how do these things interact with each other? What are they actually about? And like, how do they come up in our lives? So I can't wait to get into this. This is something I feel really passionate about. But before we do that, Let's talk about our gratitude. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I think I went uh, first on gratitude last time. Do you want to hit it up? You've been first on gratitude every time. Oh! So, uh, <laughs> almost, but it's only because I tend to do the intros and then I hand it to you. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. I could take it back then. So, what I'm grateful for today is really awesome friends. I mm -hmm. I love having friends that actually like to hear what's going on in my life um and when they ask me how i'm doing they actually want to know um i'm grateful for those mm. those doobies that i love in my life i wish those for everybody me too mm. i am grateful for this ridiculous place that i live um i live in shelburne falls for anyone local um if you haven't done a day trip here you really should it is the sweetest, quaintest, most beautiful village in the hills of Western Mass. So right now it's just vibrant and green and there's clean water and clean air. And it's, I mean, I know nothing is <laughs> super <clears throat> impenetrable, but it's a very safe place to raise kids. And I just absolutely love my little village. So. I am grateful for Shelburne Falls as a place to raise my family. Mm -hmm. It is pretty awesome. I can definitely support the day trip idea. Um, it's a Come say pretty, hi. Tell me it's a pretty decent hike from me, as I'm on the Connecticut line of Western Mass. <laughs> so, um, but it is worth the drive for sure. Okay, motivation versus inspiration. So when we first brought this up, um, I or we. You know, like it came up for me as one of the things that I would love to talk about with you because I would like to know your thoughts because for me, like motivation and inspiration, I often feel like they're in, used interchangeably and they are so, so different to me. Hmm. Um, it's, it's like if you, if you compare them to physically moving something one is push energy and one is pull energy. And I really thrive off of pull energy. Like that's what really sustains me. But I'm ridiculously susceptible to motivational energy. <laughs> like that can get me fired up like a little miniature supernova, but then it literally burns me out like mm. so fast. Um, so how do you feel about that? Do you, do you agree with sort of that like metaphor of like the push yeah, to versus me, like, pull? Um, inspiration is like the soul, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Inspiration are the things that just like speak directly to your center and um, super grounding. Like inspiration is very grounding. Whereas motivation is very forward moving. Um, mm -hmm. It's very like trajectory. Um, yeah, to me, like, inspiration is motivation in some ways, but it's, it's much deeper. It's, like, for the, the golden center. <laughs> mm. um, and motivation is, like, how are you going to actually get stuff done? Mm -hmm. I didn't decide if I was going to swear or not in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't well I think just for safety's sake we'll probably make sure that every show is labeled explicit just so we don't have to like be careful <laughs> why not? or like have a disclaimer at the beginning of episodes like don't put this on when the kids are listening <laughs> because guaranteed we're gonna go there at some time at some point I, I know I will um yeah so one of the you know how much I love like the light and the dark and the shadow sides of things and um 
I, as hard as I try, I'm having a really hard time finding the shadow of inspiration, even though the shadow of motivation comes out for me really easily. Um, like if you think about it, well, lots of things can be motivating, including like a whip to your back. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm just not sure. Like I, I literally can't think of like the shadow. I don't know if this falls into what you're thinking, but to me, it's like, and I've been in this trap myself. So I know that it's really easy to fall into is that inspiration without motivation isn't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so like the dream so about the trap action is that yeah. you can get stuck in inspiration. You can Ooh, okay, wow. Like, you can become like a journaling queen, a meme queen, a absorbing everyone else's brilliance queen. Um but are you moving forward in your own purpose on the planet or are you just absorbing all this inspiration and letting it sit which is making you beautiful and bright and shiny but I don't believe we're, I don't believe most of us are meant to be here just to be peacefully inspired. I think we're here to make a difference in the world. And so if you're inspired all the time, but not motivated to go to, to do something, to do like. things, mm -hmm. then it can be a trap. That is a fantastic reframe. And that's exactly where I was trying to go because I, I don't, I'm not sure that I would have gotten there myself because I, I think it's because I'm so susceptible to the motivation side mm. um, that a lot of times I, I can fuel myself to work towards something and like give it so much of my time and energy and then start looking back. I'm like, why the heck am I doing this? Or like, <laughs> I, like I remember why I started doing it, but like, that went away. <laughs> Why am I doing it now? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm, I feel myself fueled by this motivational force, but the inspiration's not there. So I, mm -hmm. I really hadn't ever thought of it from sort of that like reframe from the opposite perspective. So that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just think we need both. I do. Yeah. And, and like I said, I don't want to define why or why not anyone was brought to this planet, but I personally believe that we, we do have some kind of mission here. And inspiration is what allows us to find and carry out our mission, but we have to actually do the work of carrying it out, and which is where we why we need motivation. <laughs> oh, I love that! Thank you so much. You like totally evolved this concept for me. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm curious what you're gonna get off and accomplish based on this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it probably will be something because I'm very motivated right now <laughs> and inspired. Okay, so which do you think um, shows up more naturally for you? Inspiration. Inspiration. Interesting because I'm totally motivated. Hmm. <sighs> That's cool. So um, I think a lot of that has to do with my privilege, right? Like I am... I have beautiful, healthy children. I have a beautiful, loving marriage. I have a beautiful, safe and warm or cool home. <laughs> I have an amazing place to live. So I can just stay really lovey and like, oh, <laughs> just treat me and I'm inspired all the time. Um, whereas I have to actually motive I ha I need motivation it does not come easily to me to, mm -hmm. to get beyond some of those things like I'm so grateful for my lack of pain points but I kind of need pain points sometimes to push. a whip to the back effect yeah yeah so that so I think your question was which comes easier to you and inspiration definitely comes easier to me which um I think it's what I give easier to like, I think in general, the people that I work with um, would call me more inspirational than motivational. Hmm. But that's, it, that'd be an interesting survey. Would you define <laughs> me as motivational or inspirational? Hmm. Yeah. And, and maybe we shouldn't have like, or maybe I shouldn't have misled this conversation by saying motivation versus inspiration because it could totally be motivation and oh, inspiration. Yeah. Oh, it's not, it wasn't no, not even intended to be like an either or thing. No, I didn't think you meant that at all. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So naturally to me, motivation 
motivation is more natural. I, I am someone that's always moving towards something. And I think the challenge with that is sometimes I'm moving so fast and I'm so easily engaged towards something that it's not always the right thing. And when it's not the right thing, mm. it's sometimes I'm moving so fast and there's so much momentum that it's really hard to redirect and, ah. um, and sometimes very costly to redirect because I get things going so deep and so fast and so broad. Um, you know, like the, the business that I started last year is one of these examples. Like <clears throat> I had this amazingly overwhelming inspirational moment of what I like could vision the future of my life being and that had to exist and then I just jumped right in so far so fast and you know lots of things changed the game changed and yet it took me way too long to actually realize that I was not capable of doing what I was trying to do by myself and it had really costly impact and so and a, a ways into it like I was still fueled by like that original inspiration, but that it somehow translated to motivation that kept me going way past what I should have done. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that is really well, our last episode was about self care. So for yeah. you, so it sounds like knowing who you are, like part of your self care is to have some sort of like inspiration check in. <laughs> yeah. Inspiration check in. And also like yeah. a constant, you know, a, a reassessment of what's getting my, like getting my trade value of my life, you know, <laughs> because I can stay motivated towards something well past its prime. Yeah. And I can get other people motivated about it too, <laughs> you know? Um, so it, it's an interesting, you know, interesting dynamic between these two things. And I love that you point, uh, you made some really, you gave me some really good. What are clarity. some of the things that you do that motivate other people? That motivate other people? Well, like what are some of the ways that you motivate other people? To yeah, it, it's largely my enthusiasm can be very mm -hmm. contagious when I'm so yeah. fired up about something. Right. Um, so it, it can be very contagious. And then like I actually have a lot of employees, so like money and actual incentives yeah. and, yeah. you know, leadership motivates people Yeah, and being transparent and sharing my story. I also think it inspires people as well. You know, like I, I had the honor of being the keynote presenter at the um, annual event for the lioness magazine group or the lioness group um, a couple of years ago. And the, the whole premise of my talk was um, <clears throat> actually, let me just see. No, we're not getting off topic. Um, the premise of my talk was like not putting the comparison effect. And we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to talk about this in a future episode, probably soon. Um, but you're know, like comparing, especially on social media a couple of years ago, comparing your behind the scenes footage to everybody else's highlight reel and how destructive that can be. And in the course of this talk, you know, I, I presented like, here's what the last 10 years of my life has, have actually looked like. And I listed off all of my awards and all of these amazing accomplishments and all of these like things that have happened that I have gotten so much recognition and accolade for. And like from the outside, this might look pretty damn good, right? Like look at the life that I've lived. And, and then on the other side, I said, and actually, I'm going to give you like a glimpse behind the curtain of what my real life was like while I was winning all of these awards and while I was blowing all of these expectations out of the water and all of this stuff. And it was like, you know, stories of uh, abuses in my history and like really horrific things that I've struggled with. And like my life has been publicly awesome. Like I have people tell me all the time that they can't believe what I've done with my life, but then very few people know the actual story of the life that I lived, not just the life that I performed, but the life that I lived during that exact same window of time. And that transparency is very inspiring. Um, and I'm not saying that because like I was great at that. I, I was totally modeling what I have found the most inspiring. You know, when other people have said to me like, you know, and not like the totally now cliche and what feel like totally manipulative 
you know, messages of rags to riches kind of stuff that are used in marketing and sales. I don't mean that stuff. I mean, like when you read someone's autobiography and, and realize all the things you didn't know that like they overcame to get the success, like, you know, that their overnight success was actually 25 years of misery in the making, right. <laughs> like 25 years of sacrifice. <laughs> I, do um, think what's, I think there's some fine lines though. Like I totally agree. I'm a super transparent person. Super mm-hmm. parent. Um, but I also sometimes people's vulnerability actually stops me dead in my tracks. Really? Yeah. Whereas like some, sometimes I actually want to see the super story and know that it's possible without knowing all the hurdles they've been through to get there. Because if I, I'm an end goal kind of person, right? I'm not saying people shouldn't share the the challenges along the way i'm just i'm just being real (laughs) i'm an end goal kind of person so if i can see what someone's accomplished or have a vision for what i can accomplish um i'll find my way there like i'll figure it out i'll get there and i'll have my own challenges along the way but if i think there's a fine line about sharing too much of the challenge because and i say that because i'm the kind of person who can be like oh my god if there's that many hurdles along the way i'm not gonna try (laughs) so i have this like very um rose colored glasses thing where like i'm gonna i'm gonna have the end goal vision and i know i'll get there no matter what but if i have to look at the path to actually get there it can actually be very unmotivating. It can oh, stop okay. my tracks. So, so there you go. There's like, an interesting thing. And I've never really talked about that before because most people say like, well, that you can't just paint the pretty picture. But I'm the kind of person who most wants to see the pretty picture. <laughs> I'd rather see the pretty picture. But I know not everybody's like me. Like I'm an end goal motivator, motivated person. So mm-hmm. when I see the whole track, I'm like, well, that's too much work. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, well, tying this right back into our topic, the motivation and inspiration piece, like when you see all of the hurdles, you're like when you, so you, you kind of named it, it's, you named it. It is a personality thing for you to like see the end goal and you acknowledge that there's going to be hurdles. You know, oh, yeah. there's going to be obstacles. You just don't want to like think know that maybe it's going to be so all the same there. as those. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is you have the level of inspiration that will carry you through whatever hurdle comes up. Yes. And for other types of personalities, it can be motivating to say like, I could survive that too, or I've actually survived worse than that. Or right. like, no problem. I've got this. Like, oh, that's all it's going to take for me to get that thing? Like, my imagination took it to a hundred times worse than what that was. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, but interestingly, I think that inspiration can actually carry you farther, longer, and deeper than motivation can. It can. I think motivation is kind of like a battery and inspiration is a sun. Yeah. Like, inspiration is going to come up. It's going to continue fueling you. And motivation needs to leave, need, literally needs to be recharged before it can be used again. You know, if you hit too bad of a hurdle, you are not going to be really motivated to get up tomorrow and try to do that all over again. Which you might be inspired to. (laughs) Two minute warning. (laughs) It's such a great, um, it's such a great example of how we as human beings just need to put who we are fully out there because someone needs it, right? Like what I need is not the same thing Tara needs. And Mm -hmm. so just put who you are out there and it's not going to serve anyone, everyone, but it's not supposed to serve everyone. It's supposed to serve someone. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the differences we all have, is just such proof that, you know, I'm not going to follow the people who share every little challenge and every little bump and every little, um, look what I overcame because that's, that's not the person who's going to inspire and motivate me. Yeah. The person who's going to inspire and motivate me is like, look what I accomplished. And I'm like, dude, if you accomplish that, so can I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, I really, I think the person that does that so perfectly for you is Brooke Castillo. Yes. <laughs> because, 
<laughs> she is so like a celebrate the wins person. And she's, she always like acknowledges like, yeah, it wasn't totally easy, but let's not even talk about that stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. that, stuff that, like, that stuff came and went and let's just focus on the awesome. Well, it's interesting because my new, pa- oh, I know we only have a minute, but my new um, blog that I'm writing about parenting is called Being You. And I, um, being, being you, being mom. And um, as I write it, I'm using her model to show how I parent. And it's giving me this insight into how I actually process all the really frustrating stuff. But I do it so quickly that it makes it look very shiny. And so writing this blog in a way that other people can understand how I get from the messy to the shiny is showing me like, well, you really do go through the messy. You just go through it quickly. And you, now you have a tool to show other people how to go through it quickly too. Yeah. But well, yeah, that is. right. It is why I love Brooke Castillo so much. <laughs> 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 she is very much focused on the shiny kind of person. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right, cool. Well, that is going to have to wrap up this conversation of motivation and inspiration. Um, this was really powerful for me. I came in with sort of an expectation about how I felt about this and it did shift. So thanks, Amanda. You're the best. I love it. <laughs> I love us. I do too. I love you. I love me and I love us and I love all of you. Yes. Um, okay. So let's wrap up our episode with our quick ask for this week. And remember everybody, we actually do this because we're asking you to do it as well. Like we're asking to show you that it's okay to ask for what you need and want. And we want to hear that from you too. So Amanda, what's your, what's your ask for today? This is a good example of how I'm not used to asking. So sometimes it doesn't come to me right away. So if you have one, please share. And I promise to to end with one, but. um, Practice makes perfect. hmm. Yeah. So let's see my ask for today. The thing that I am, I am needing the most. Let's see. Actually the thing that I'm wanting the most is to add a little bit of creativity to my life. So if anybody has like a suggestion of like really cool, like artsy fartsy free apps or something that could like dip me into creativity on a more regular basis, just in like really small, easy ways, I would love that suggestion. Hmm. (laughs) That's the last thing I need. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, well, then maybe you should share with me some of the ones you have. <laughs> organization, creating a structure in your life, um, scheduling. <laughs> Other than Trello, let me know. <laughs> yeah, everybody she yeah. hates Trello. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, gosh, I... I, oh my gosh, I'm really not, not knowing. I'm not knowing. Um, I do know that having kids such different ages can be really challenging sometimes. So if anyone just has words of wisdom on navigating those waters at the same time, sometimes when you're parenting a teenager and you're parenting a toddler at the same time, it's like when you um, have a second child and you feel like you're there's not enough. Like, I I failed someone today because everyone's needs are so different. So if anyone has tips around that, around anyone who parents kids of pretty different ages, like mine, mine would top and bottom would be 10 and uh, 13 13 and three. So a 10 year difference. It can get challenging some days to feel like, am I meeting everyone's different needs? Because the needs of a three-year-old are so different than a 13 year old. So any resources for that would be awesome. Cool. All right. On that note, everybody, please tell us what your asks are for the week. And until then, (laughs) bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you haven't already done so, please do us the honor of leaving a rating and review on iTunes and check in with us on social. Amanda Kingsley is a work from home mother of three. Her mission is to free parents from financial stress so they can spend more time being present with their children. Learn more at her website, thewhyhive.com. Tara Masildine is a passionate entrepreneur, founding several businesses over the last 15 years. She's currently living the adventure of being a CEO, mom, and collaborative coach. Find her at allin.life.